All right, welcome back to Green Bay Football Corporation. And this week we're doing another midweek mock draft. We're a day earlier than we usually do them today. On Wednesday, I'll be traveling the next couple of days, um, which means that there won't be any more player profiles over the weekend. I'll be back early next week with a few more of those. If you haven't checked them out yet, I've got a link down in the description for this video. So far, we've done Quinion Mitchell, um, Olu Fashinu, uh, Cooper DeJean, and Graham Barton. And the next few that I've got uh, kind of in the hopper to work on there is Kool-Aid McKinstry and then um, Kingsley Suamatia. Uh, so a couple more guys at late first round, um, early second round, potentially at 41 as well, that the Packers might be interested in targeting. Kool-Aid McKinstry, somebody that we just saw this past week have a top 30 visit with the Packers. And, uh, you know, just real quick on some Packers news, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about you know, having the Brazil game a Friday night to open the season against Philadelphia, you know, is it better to play in Brazil, which is a wild opportunity than it is to have to travel, travel to Philadelphia in a harsh environment like that to play. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, let me, let me know in the comments below, but um, yeah, let's get right into it. So we haven't done this so far yet. So I wanted to look at potentially trading back. So I've got one pulled up here back to the PFF simulator and we'll just kind of really quick go over the board what happened. So they got Drake May, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, one, two, three, um, handful of receivers in Malik Neighbors and Her Harrison Jr. Then uh, McCarthy, edge tackle, receiver, more tackles, big run on tackles from 10 to 13 here. And, uh, you know, we see guys like Fuanga, Fautanu, uh, Fashinu. The top two corners on the board and Terry and Arnold and Quinion Mitchell go. Graham Barton is off the board. And uh, then Cooper DeJean goes one pick before the Packers pick here at 25. So that leaves us with Jerzon Newton, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Jackson Powers Johnson, Tyler Newbin. Uh, among those at the top of the board, we'll scroll through here real quick to see a couple of those. But I thought this would be a relatively interesting uh, scenario to look at where we potentially trade back. and. If I jump over to the trade tab here, I kind of scoped this out beforehand by looking at the Rich Hill trade chart. Um, the Falcons were one that were interested in this pick for their uh, thing. They Their next pick is number 43. So if we did 43, 74 and 109 by the Rich Hill trade chart, that equals 232 points, which is two points more than pick 25. So pretty high likelihood that they'll accept this trade, relatively fair value. And the Packers would pick up you know, three more, um, you know, premium picks. Really, 109 is just on the fringe of top 100. So you're still bound to get somebody really good there, um, which I haven't mentioned. We are doing just four rounds today. So that'll all three of those picks will be in this mock draft. So we're going to go ahead and offer this trade and see if they accept, which they do. So then we'll be back up at 41 next. Um, and we'll just kind of review who ends up going off the board here. I saw uh, Suamatia just went um, shortly after 25. I saw Jerzon Newton, um, Kool-Aid McKinstry went, Jordan Morgan, another uh, possible target for the Packers at tackle. Uh, Darius Robinson, who I think is a, a sleeper kind of Packer pick there as well. So here we are at pick 41 and let's take a look. So Positions that I would really want to be looking at. Obviously, we know offensive tackles of interest. We want cornerback on that board. Um, and then I'll throw edge in because I think that's some place that the Packers might consider going pretty early here as well. Um, so let's take a look. TJ Tampa is available. Uh, Adisa Isaac at the edge. Uh, Jonah Ellis as well. Kieran Amenaji. Um Marshawn Neeland, who is definitely a Packers type, and uh, Austin Booker, who I did see uh, just earlier today, had a top 30 visit with the Packers as well. So a number of guys that we could look at um, among these positions here. I want to narrow this down just to tackle and really see where the depth of this kind of falls to. So um, Patrick Paul is interesting, and Dominic Puny as well. So I think I'm going to end up going cornerback TJ Tampa here. I think he 
is a solid fit for the Packers here. And again, a premium position earlier in this draft that they would be looking at taking. So TJ Tampa with pick 41. We're back up right away here at pick 43. You know, Braden Fisk is an interesting interior defensive lineman who can really bring some some pass rush. They're hyper athletic. Um, interesting possible pick there as well. Um, let's see. I mean, I think what I'm going to do here with this is I'm going to go. I mean, this is probably a little early for him, um, but I'm going to go Javon Bullard because I think the likelihood that he's there at 58 is pretty slim. So I think he's somebody that the Packers really like um, basing really on how he would fit in that uh, safety room alongside Xavier McKinney. And then the fact that he has like great, great conversations out there about his football intelligence and his his recall of, of plays. I believe I told a story last week about uh, taking Javon Bullard. So I'm going to go him here as well at pick 43, probably a little earlier than most would think, but uh, he typically goes off the board somewhere around 53, 54 from what I've seen. Um, and that leaves us here at 58. Um, still have an addressed linebacker, which this is really kind of the pick that I would ideally look at linebacker and we do see edger and cooper and junior colson are still here um this i think is really good value for edger and cooper at 58 i think the likelihood that he's there is probably slimmer but we're going to go ahead and just run this pick in because i think the packers would do exactly that at pick 58 so we're going to go edger and cooper at 58 then uh really probably looking to see um, where tackle is an interior offensive line at this point and possibly safety here as well um, at pick 74. So I'm going to go, actually, I grabbed a safety, uh, disregard that. So tackle, uh, we see Dominic Puny is still here, even though I think the Packers would probably take him and move him to guard. Um, let's see. Um, edge. Austin Booker is interesting. Um, we're next up at 88. Got three picks in the next 14 or 15 picks, which is uh, excellent. So let's take a look some more. Just specifically at interior offensive line. Hmm. Let's see. I mean, running back's a great position here as well. And Jalen Wright, this is kind of right in his range. I actually think I'm going to run with Jalen Wright here because I like his kind of skill set and what he would bring to this backfield that's different from Josh Jacobs and uh, A.J. Dillon at this point. And he could potentially, you know, two, three years down the line be that you know, primary bell cow in that backfield. So we're going to take Jalen Wright here at pick 74. Um, really cashing in on some of these extra picks that we ended up picking up from the Falcons, you know, giving up 25 for 43, uh, 74 and 109 here in this mock draft so far. Um, if you're just now picking up, we'll go back real quick and recap where we are. So at 41, we took cornerback TJ Tampa out of Iowa state, uh, 43, a little bit early probably, but Javon Bullard, the safety out of Georgia, really taking that defensive backfield early in this this, uh, this draft. Then 58, we got Edrin Cooper to fall down to us, which is fantastic. And then at 74, we were um, faced with the op op opportunity that uh, usually we don't have in that kind of mid-range between 58 and 88 to take Jalen Wright. So we went ahead and took him there at 74. That leaves us here at pick 88. And uh, you see a number of running backs still at the top of the board here. Renardo Green is somebody that a lot of Packers fans are really uh, intrigued by um, for the slot position, as well as you know potentially being able to play safety. Jerry and Jones is another name in that mix as well. So that could be an option here at pick 88. Um, let's see interior offensive lineman. Christian Mahogany is there. Mason McCormick. This is around the range that he'll go as well, I think. Um, tackle Dominic Puny as well. And I think he is definitely somebody that we need to keep an eye on. Um, especially because he did run really well in that, um, short shuttle, which is, um, from all accounts, 
an offensive lineman's kind of key to being successful in the NFL. Um, more often than not, if somebody is running uh, sub, I believe it's four seven four for that uh, twenty yard shuttle, they're more often than not going to hit rather than miss. So. Um, good option there. I think I'm going to look at him at pick 91 at 88 here though. I do want to go and I'm going to take Renardo green, um, because of that flexibility to play in some of those safety type roles, as well as being a slot corner. He can be somebody that can kind of plus up that role that, um, that we know Keyshawn Nixon has been holding down the last year or two. So Renardo green at 88 and then back up at 91 and our guy did not go so i'm gonna go dominic puny here tackle but probably transitioning to guard for the packers at pick 91 out of kansas so that leaves us with 109 and 126 uh, left here in this mock draft so got some options here and again someplace that Right here, uh, looking at Michael Hall Jr. is definitely a guy that the Packers, I think, are interested in. Uh, another top 30 visit candidate, tested really well at his pro day. And I think that's going to be our pick here. You, know, you see his average draft position is about, you know, what's that, 20, no, 12 picks higher? Jeez, math. Um, so we're going to go Michael Hall Jr. here at pick 109. Again, you know, some different guys are in different ranges here than what we're used to seeing the Packers pick as we have, you know, a relatively large span between picks um, in the second, third, and into the fourth round. And here we are again at pick 126. I can't imagine us having gone with uh, a safety and a corner who can potentially play safety and then also take another safety uh, here in the fourth round. With Cole Bishop, though, he is definitely somebody that a lot of Packers fans are calling for. Um, I think this would be a spot that we'd be interested in, potentially a wide receiver as well. Um, I really like some of the agility work that Malik Washington has shown. Um, he was cutting it up out there at the East-West Shrine game. Really interesting guy. I mean, I've picked Luke McCaffrey a number of times in some of these mocks as well. I really like what he potentially has to bring and definitely fits you know, a lot of the boxes that the Packers want, if not all of them, out of a receiver. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they took him there as well. And then um, let's see, do we have anybody that's going to be a true tackle here? I think we got a little bit of time before we end up you know, taking a flyer at tackle. Maybe we jump in and look at another linebacker here because that's definitely a position of need. And this is a range where, Either of these guys could be interesting, but my guy out of these two is Cedric Gray. So I'm going to go ahead and take Cedric Gray, um, linebacker from North Carolina with pick 126 in the NFL draft. And that'll really conclude this week's midweek mock draft. Let's go ahead and recap what we had here. We had TJ Tampa with pick 41 after we traded 25 in exchange for 43, 74, and 109. Um, we then picked up Javon Bullard, the safety out of Georgia at pick 43. We picked, uh, Edrin James or Edrin, Edrin James, Edrin Cooper, the linebacker out of AM at pick 58, Jalen Wright at pick, uh, 74, the running back from Tennessee. Uh, many, you know, equate him to a, an Aaron Jones kind of clone and, uh, in many, many cases. And, uh, then we picked Renardo Green, the cornerback from, uh, Florida State, who does have experience and potentially is more aligned to play either the slot or the safety position. Um, then we got Dominic Puny, who's probably going to be a guard at the NFL level at pick 91. Michael Hall Jr., the defensive tackle from Ohio State at pick 109. And then Cedric Gray, the linebacker out of North Carolina at pick 126. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this mock. Uh, got a few names that we haven't really seen in my mock draft so far i've seen them in a, in a number of other ones specifically you know, i haven't had a chance to take jalen Wright yet or renardo green or dominic puny i don't believe either so some interesting names to look at here um, and again like i said um, i'm going to be traveling the next couple of days so i will be off the net um, i'll be able to reach out to comments and things like that if you see them but um, again 
I've got a link down in the description. I'll put a, a card up here so you can click on that if you're watching this on the replay for you know the player uh, profile series that I've got going so far. Like I said, I've had um, Quinion Mitchell, um, goodness, Cooper DeGene, Olu Fashinu, and Graham Barton so far, the four that I've knocked out. Again, keep a lookout. I'm going to have Kool-Aid McKinstry and Kingsley Suamatia early next week, and then we'll be getting into some of the linebackers and the edges uh, later on into the week as well. So um, again, thanks for uh, tuning in, checking out this mock draft. Let me know what you think in the comments. Which guy um, are you thrilled to have? Which guy are you like, um, would I could do without him? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for tuning in again. I will see you next week for another midweek mock draft.